At Pocket Lab, we love to find out ways to do classic experiments in fun ways. And what's more fun than a roller coaster? And there's so much physics going inside the loop of a roller coaster. There's so many things we can learn about. Angular velocity, centripetal acceleration. But how do we get data out of something like this? Normally, if you put a Hot Wheels car on a Hot Wheels track, you can see what's going on, but it's very difficult to get data out of anything that we see. Place a pocket lab on top of a Hot Wheels car. And now we can collect data all along the track in a number of different ways. The first way that we've come up with is to encode the track with magnets. Under each of these sections, we have magnets on the back side of the connectors. When the Pocket Lab and Hot Wheels car passes over these sections, we can see a change in the magnetic field. Using that magnetic field change and the time, we can come up with timing gates, magnetic timing gates at each of these sections. And knowing the distance that the car has traveled, we can come up with a calculation for the speed of our Hot Wheels car. So that's way one. The Pocket Lab has not only a magnetometer to detect the magnetic field timing gates, but also a gyroscope. And when the Hot Wheels car goes through the loop, we're able to measure the angular velocity or the rate of change of the angular rotation as it's moving through that loop. Pocket Lab also has an accelerometer. So as the car goes through this loop, we can use the accelerometer to directly measure the g-forces that you would feel if you were a person going through this roller coaster loop. And we'll look at all of that data in this video. Here we're measuring the gate times using the magnetic field. Here we're measuring the angular velocity using the gyroscope. Here we're measuring the acceleration or the g-forces felt using the accelerometer. Now it's time to do the data analysis. And we want to look at the angular velocity inside the loop and the g-forces that are felt. We can do this in a couple ways. We can calculate the average loop velocity using our timing gates. The time that we exit the loop minus the time that we enter the loop and using the circumference of our track. Um, plugging in the geometry in our time, we get 1.9 meters per second as our average velocity. Now, using that average velocity, we can also calculate an average angular velocity of 18.5 radians per second, or about 1060 degrees per second. When we compare this to the measurement from our gyroscope, we measured an average angular velocity of 1170 degrees per second. So pretty good agreement. Now, we can take that, those timing gate data and also calculate our radial acceleration or the g-forces that we're feeling inside the loop. And what we calculate is 3.6 g's on average. Now if we look at our measured data and average that out over the loop, we averaged about 3.7 g's. So we're getting good agreement from the theory um, that we're using and our measurements of the timing gates versus our direct measurements using the gyroscope and the accelerometer.